are minus nine here today. Uh, wind chill, I think, is like 32. I always uh, have a friend up in Ely. We kind of exchange uh, stories. They are minus 42 today. That's and my crazy. friend likes to go out and like snowshoe every day, and he will go out today too. <laughs> minus 42. <laughs> wind chill, that is. Ely, it's Minnesota. Important. Yeah, it's important <laughs> to have weather not dictate your happiness. I think that was frostbite falls in the uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle uh, story or something. It was Ely or International Falls. They were always Rocky. Were you a Rocky and Bullwinkle fan at all? Uh, I missed it just a little bit. Yeah. Boris was this bad kind of Russian guy. So I don't even know if it's legal to have. They probably took it off the air, but it was a great, there was always a take home on Rocky and Bullwinkle. So a lot of that old school, you know, Disney stuff. They would be canceled right now. Well, and let me, let me tell you some of the new school Disney stuff in a few years is going to be canceled too. It's called uh, everything old is new again. Everything, everything doesn't repeat itself but I really think history rhymes. There's a lot of rhyming going on in history. What happened 40 years might necessarily not totally repeat, but things happening might rhyme. So that might be the kind of the side take home we just kind of stumbled into here today. Hey, today, uh, <clears throat> January 25th, uh, 2020, and Titanic Times continues. And uh, Titanic Times is today we're going to do finances and specifically we're going to go over the books. I think we assigned them last time. Uh, Dave Ramsey, who just uh, does a really nice basic educational uh, course of where you're at, where you should be and uh, how you should plan to move forward. And then we'll go on to a buddy of mine, uh, uh, Kiyosaki, who's in a group that we uh, chat with now and then, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And then a personal friend of mine, too, uh, Mitch Anthony, wrote this book, uh, New Retire Mentality, that'll just give us a little uh, mindset. So uh, Titanic times are those times that you, defining it, I guess we'd have to say, hold on, somebody's calling in. It's kind of those life moments where, as you knew it, totally changes. Uh, now you see it, now you don't. What you thought was going on is totally not going on anymore. And uh, finances, uh, my direct finance one, and maybe share just a brief story of yours, a 90 second peak. My uh, Titanic time on a finances <clears throat> has happened several times, but the recent one I shared earlier, uh, at 62, I wrote down that I'm gonna retire like at 72. Uh, so like 10 years later, financial plan just cooking right where probably we should be achieving goals uh pam and i are kind of where we should be debts are paid off helping out kids moving forward college is getting knocked off all good three weeks later found myself at mayo clinic with some health issues whoa times are changing that was a uh now you see it now you don't what you thought was going to happen it was uh it's kind of that initial thing is uh during the headlight phase is how, how I would kind of describe those moments. It's, uh, you know, things can happen, but until it happens, you aren't really expecting it. So initially you go, what now? W what now? Um, um, Pam and I kind of talked about it. I really shouldn't go back to work. And I, she decided we're not going to, uh, not she decided, we decided. And that's how we got into this book uh, issue and Titanic time. So closed doors, open doors. This is a prime example I've had no idea I'd be sitting here doing a podcast with my son midday on something that I'm passionate about versus being in the office with 32 patients today, mid afternoon. So this is, uh, I'm living proof that you can go beyond the what now that yeah. takes about two days to two weeks to, uh, what next takes about two months to two years. And I was in that. And then the why not, the why not, we're into it now. <clears throat> so we're into the why not. And my financial uh, uh, clash and the Titanic time was really from about 62 to 70, your finances where you're at doubles or even triples. I mean, it's just a great time of life because you have some funds saved up. Uh, we'll go into this uh, rules of 72 later. And it's uh, uh, literally things start doubling every five years. So if I could have made it five years, I would have gone from X to two X to four X. So it's yeah. like really gets kind of crazy. That said, 
that's okay. We're, we're on to some other things. So that's where we're at. How would you, what was a uh, Titanic time for you? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm still kind of in getting like, like kicked off the boat, right? So I, I was on this, this ship that we were, we were working on uh, this product juice spot, which was a, a cold press juice kiosk. And, and we'd fought for about 10 years to be able to get it to San Francisco and then LA and, and build it up to 25 employees with, um, with really good accounts and, and Snapchat and Twitter and, and whole foods with you were in Disney for Pete's sake. Yeah. With all, you know, all these, uh, really good future perspective spaces that we were doing kind of like pilot episodes with that were working um, to a certain extent and then got kicked off that boat through uh, a group of investors that um, seemingly kind of started to embezzle money through the accounts, kicked us off and never sold a juice from the day that we left when we were told that we were the kids that were, uh, were unable to manage and facilitate the growth of a company that was kind of getting close to a rocket ship period. And they said, Hey, if we're going to go take this next step into this real growth period, you all got to be gone. That's not to say that they won't exist in like five years and rise like a Phoenix from the ashes. Um, but from this current point in time, they still haven't really done much to it. And uh, so I find they myself... really they really threw you into the icy cold waters. I mean, you were off the ship. You well, guys it, literally it, went. You were you were whining and dining in first class on the Titanic at about ten that evening, April fifteenth, uh, uh, nineteen twelve, and by two twenty that evening, uh, you were in the water. You're in the water with your uh, kin. W.T. Stead trying to uh, stay on to a piece of wood with John J. Astor staying alive. It was like, holy schmoly. Yeah. <clears throat> so then I, you know, I just, I find myself in the space and time where um, the, the history that I've built is, is mine. The experience that I have um, is something that I've collectively worked for, but I don't have a lot to be able to show like in the physical world. My resume wouldn't make a lot of sense to people but my experience is pretty thorough. Um, mm -hmm. One of my business partners absolutely just launched off and, and continued to, to crush it when he um, got back to Minnesota um, through a, a chicken shop and then also um, through a restaurant. And mm -hmm. then um, other business partner kind of went back up north in northern Minnesota and uh, has continued to just kind of like live a life of just like a quieter kind of space than living out like in L.A. And uh, I find myself just really in this interesting spot where, you know, we risked a lot of, you know, your finances, um, all different, uh, different relatives, finances, friends, finances, our own. Um, I'm still really proud of what we, what we got to, Absolutely. but and we're proud of what you've done. <laughs> yeah. But on a monetary level, <laughs> at least for myself, I, I find myself in a space where it just really hasn't like worked out for me monetarily now there's nothing to whine about because you are a significant support system to be able to make sure that i can continue to push and uh but you know i just i dove right into nonprofit world you know serving in the midnight mission downtown and then also now now serving in watts uh for, for almost the last like two years now doing a bunch of random the programming entrepreneurship stuff there and we'll continue to show for it. But that, that's kind of the brief synopsis of I'm truly in the moment where I got a wedding coming up in six months. Found, he found is, his life partner. So that's wild. Yep. Which is, it's beautiful. Uh, it's way too expensive. I can't afford it. Getting support to be able to do that. Um, life is coming down the line and I don't really, I now on a, a structural sense of like who I am a person, I feel pretty confident, but monetarily my life doesn't make a lot of sense right now. And I, so I try to take my talents and uh, continue to help other people build. And we'll kind of mm -hmm. see from there of where it kind of spits out. But um, there, you know, what's weird is when you, when you're my age, 34 years old, you have a bunch of like, I have a few different skills but you can be in decision paralysis a little bit too, because it's hard to know where to go with um, what you want to do. Do you, do you continue to shoot for that far dream? 
Do you start working back in a coffee shop just to, to maintain the space? It's probably a little bit of both. Um, and I, but I probably haven't succumbed to my ego enough completely to actually do some of the groundwork financially to be able to build. Um, I'm, I'm still probably taking just too many risks to say just future shots still um, than always doing the fundamental ground stuff. But it's it's well, it's. Well, I think when... you're doing wonderful things. You're podcasting. You're doing stand up. You're literally closed doors for you. Uh, closed doors, open doors, and your open doors. My opinion of when you went into what now, I was shocked on how quickly you pivoted from to what now. I think a lot of people are in the what now. It's really tough. What do we do? Lost my job. What now? And you literally pivoted. It was literally like in a week, I've heard you go from working, you were working like literally downtown on uh, uh, in uh, Santa Fe or whatever it is, district or whatever it no, is. No, we're in, in Skid Row. Uh, Skid Row, Skid yeah. Row. And literally a, a week later, you're in Watts. So you're, oh, you're what, oh, yeah, we were working out the arts, arts district so for a juice you're spot. What then, now, yeah. literally, you went what now? Boom. Now I know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm taking the next step. You didn't really mess with it. You just did it. Now you're solidly in the what next phase. Right. And once again, what next is different for everybody. It might be two months, two years, but I think you're really moved. I think beyond the what next, and you're almost into the why not? Why not do podcasts? Why not stand up? Why not really develop this nonprofit? Why not go out and do lectures to other companies on literally Titanic times? Uh, what now? What next? And why not? And literally sure. share your story because you have a hell of a story. And it's 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 what's been really fun for me is in the last. You know, I went from like a partnership with my boys from college to now a partnership with my future wife. Mm -hmm. And through our what next phase, from me getting thrown off the boat, our nonprofit stuff immediately was able to get her into like a really unbelievable group through just showing up. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know what that, what that tick was, right? So like we started serving daily um at the midnight mission downtown before we got kicked out of juice box because okay. what was happening was um you were already was, serving you were already you were already leading by example making it happen in service of above self service above self i'm i feel so proud all you kids have done a component of that even all the time all the time so you're already doing that so that's awesome and then well it just it's interesting to see how like those little transitions, I really do think that it's it's really valuable to like at least monthly do a service thing. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really important incorporation into, you know, being a part of uh, a church or, you know, going to being a part of a gym, um, eating right, having good friends. I think some people on the, the monthly uh, basis are, are missing that kind of service component. And that immediately led into um, just having something to do, right? Like during a time where I had no idea what was happening, the service component stuff will eat you up. And they, there always is stuff to do. Like mm -hmm. today, I have a hundred things that I am kind of missing the mark on a little bit with some like things within our entrepreneurship program that we're building um, with, you know, figuring out some of our relationships that we're growing partnerships in. It's just an all day busy effort and, and movement um, to try to like pace yourself to see what you, you're doing best. Well, I think you epitomize and all of us, I think in life, as you know, we're really about faith, family and friends. And I think during 2020, God was preparing a lot of us for the next step. I think God literally knew, knows your, your plan. You don't know, you're making your plan and God chuckles. While you're at the middle of mission, he's making plans for you to be in Watts. While you're in Watts, he's making plans for you to challenge people in Titanic times and be vulnerable enough to share your story because it's, you're getting beat up. You're, you're in the water, you're in the water and it's cold and you're, you're, you're scrabbling for a, for a life raft, just like WT and J, uh, John J. Astor. It's ugly. 
so you, you, you can share the story of literally what now, what next? And now I think you're moving solid on to why not. So yeah. I think, yeah, I've so been lucky enough to, and, and it's really through yourself and mom's grace. And I don't know what it is, but you allow me to continue to plant seeds, right? Well, well, it's the love wins. It's the whole process you guys have developed because it's such a worthwhile cause. Mm -hmm. And we it's just where you need to be. I've just been able to plant so many seeds in the last two years. Mm -hmm. um, just a beautiful community that we're able to serve. Truly mm -hmm. feel like family down in the spaces that we're working. And uh, it's, it's cool. I mean, I'm really excited about what... Mm -hmm is possible. But then also now I find myself with a level of imbalance of, you know, I have friends that like ha are making over a hundred grand a year, mm. but feel like a little empty, a little bored, mm. a little, I wish I served. And, and I'm kind of sitting on the other end of like, man, I, it would be nice to have like a little bit of routine with some income coming in <sighs> that would make mm -hmm. sense. So yeah. It's, it's weird well, phases. I'm definitely on a, a more what now though than what next. Cause I know what, what mm -hmm. next looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Well, being from the grain belt, we really, uh, in the upper Midwest and this where food comes from, you're in the time of life of sowing. You're sowing, you're laying down the seeds. You're not in the harvest yet. You're not even close to the harvest. <laughs> you're, you're in the time of sowing seeds and preparing for the next step. And the harvest will be in the future. We don't know when that'll be. The harvest might not even be for you. Sometimes the harvest is for people you served. Maybe it's for the twins you're working with in uh, uh, Watts. Who knows? We don't know the impact we have. Uh, but I think at some point it's revealed. So well, it's revealed. You, you know what was funny about one of the things that you said, like using self-deprivation on your own experience, mm -hmm. is you were saying, well, by like 70, by kind of like from being like 62 to 70 something, that's when you kind of have like the multiplier effect in your income. Oh, huge. In but, theory. <laughs> but like, in what context? Since the 80s? Since this, so, so maybe since like, so like the roaring 20s, like it was in at least the 20th century that that was even a context of reality. Totally agree. Totally agree. In that same realm, we're so blessed. We have moved ahead on shoulders of giants. And uh, what is it, Luke 12, 48, of those given much as much as be expected. And I really look like back at Loring Sr., my dad, Elva, Ed, John, Francis, way back to WT's relatives that are our relative, branches on the same team, a sense of gratitude. Mm -hmm. I might not see all the financial rewards, but I'm getting rewards through things like what you're doing. You are doing great, great things. So we really appreciate that. I think we're all re rewarded in different ways. So, well, and that's where I think it's like where I foundationally, what we're trying to do here is like starting to at least carve ground out on new soil. Mm -hmm. And we all get way too caught up in thinking that like, the soil is already tilled and all the harvest mm -hmm. from a soil is, is done. Not even. You're still talking about writing a book, a paperback book. Are you a crazy person? Books are gone. NFTs are the new thing, <laughs> right? That's why so, I got you. That's why I got you. No, no, but th that's funny to think, but in what era? Like we don't even like in, in 10,000 years, books are still there. There's going to still be relevance in that space, you would think. And so we get so caught up in the last, like what happened in the last five years that I missed the boat? What, I, what happened in the last 20 years that I missed the boat on? And if you sit, if you sit in that space too long, you'll realize that you missed 10 more boats. Yeah, absolutely. And absolutely. this, this social media and, and, and journaling and, and media today is still in very unique spaces. For example, one of the one of the large new school media juggernauts is Gary V, right? But yes. he but to hit to your era, he's still irrelevant. I can mention him in a group, any of my groups that I work with every day, and they would say, who's that? They have no idea who that is. 
right. un, until, you know, your friend brought him to Rochester and you and I actually got to met, meet him, uh, interface with him, but most he's Ill, irrelevant. To them. Irrelevant, right? And yeah. but so what's so funny to my friends, they think that in order to become a guy like Gary V, you've already missed the boat. It's our, that is already done. And that's what's so important about our relationship with like this, like talking generationally. Your generation hasn't heard of Gary V yet. And mm -hmm. you've, heard, you've known Gary V for the last like seven years mm -hmm. because of our relationship. Mm -hmm. Gary V started his platform when he was 34 years old. Mm -hmm. And he's on the way to being a, a, a pretty large media juggernaut mm -hmm. that is uh, way above ground in my generation. Mm -hmm. In my generation, Gary V is 10,000 feet past ground. In mm -hmm. your generation, he hasn't touched the surface yet. <laughs> True. <laughs> so Good you point. have to bring perspective in like what's actually going on mm -hmm. and, and continue whatever interest you have, you got to put your foot in the fire. Even you, mm -hmm. you just, you just had your, what your 64th birthday, <laughs> 66th. 66th birthday, right? Yeah, and I'm starting a new career. And your books hasn't dropped yet. <laughs> it's been hitting icebergs. Yeah, hit an iceberg of pulmonary emboli, COVID, septic knee. It keeps getting icebergs. And what's a good book on the Titanic without hitting icebergs? You and I have just been passed down, at least in our bloodstream. The reality is, it's not where you're at; it's where you're going. We just don't get too excited about where we're at. Our mindset is, so I got hit by an iceberg. Next, next iceberg, please. And I will share some stuff in the Titanic Times. WT was an interesting guy. He was a spiritualist. When he was in the water, he and John J. Astor shared some information. They knew there'd be a group exposing their story down the line. They knew there's more to the story. And I truly believe that and truly believe it for you and I and other generations. We move forward on the shoulders of giants. Right now, people are moving forward on your shoulders. You don't even know it, but they are. Uh, but all those generations, we have to give gratitude because they've all moved us a little bit further along. And it's not always money. It, it, in fact, it usually isn't. It, it's usually other things. Let's segue into finances right now. And we're going to do just this uh, kind of quick, not quick, thorough. And I'm just going to give you in my experience, I can only give you my experience, three books I found to be really beneficial because uh, I have no expertise. I'm not a life coach. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a psychologist. I'm a friend. And if anything, I can help people life navigate. I think as we move forward and we take Titanic times forward, I'll profess myself as a help in life navigating. And what's my expertise there for 35 years? As a physician, I saw 200,000 people. I interacted with 200, maybe 220,000 people. Uh, and I got to see many uh, monthly or quarterly. So I got to really know them as much as you could as a physician, which you can get to know them pretty good. And I saw through their life struggles, their Titanic times, how they handled it. And that is uh, kind of what has made my expertise in the sense, if I have any, that I, I want to share what I learned from them. And then uh, couple it with my educational things. You know, we, we try to educate each other. We try to empower each other. And we really let, try to uh, take it to the next step of what we can do to uh, encourage each other. And that's, uh, you know, the big three E's. But let's take the baby steps. Uh, I found it great. Uh, we came back from Autumn Ridge Church one time. We're probably bad Christians because we always go to the closest church. You know, we've been, I've been a Presbyterian. Uh, then we moved to town to have a Presbyterian church. So then we become a Lutheran. So we always kind of go to the closest Lutheran church. But then it, we moved in Rochester and there wasn't a Lutheran church within two miles. <laughs> You know, in, in LA, you know, if it's 20 or 30 miles, it's close in Rochester, Minnesota, if it's yeah. not two miles, you're off. So we went to Autumn Ridge and it's evangelical, non-denominational. Uh, but Pam comes home one day and says, we're signed up for Dave Ramsey. I didn't know who Dave Ramsey is. 
but then she started me listening to him on the radio and then we got his book and I encourage people check out this old guy uh, Dave Ramsey he's got a lot of life experiences and it's basic but kind of his baby steps of finance so she signed us up for this eight-week course we're going to go to an hour a week and uh I was excited to go it was great so fast forward to the end of this course <clears throat> this guy came up to me the coordinator navigator and he said you didn't really want to be here did you and I said like no, I wanted to be here. He goes, no, you didn't. He, he apparently perceived from my nonverbal that I was just not happy being there. So I guess I have to be careful with my nonverbal. I was happy to be there. I, I thought it was a good, good thing to be there, <coughs> but it was hilarious. I guess I was that person in the back going, oh, whatever. So I, I'm going to be more cognizant of uh, my nonverbal, but baby steps are really, really cool. And I'm going to put my spin on his baby steps. For example, and there's only, I think, maybe seven baby steps. And baby step one is to save $1,000 for an emergency fund. That is a great idea. I can tell you, I've been in your steps. Like at 34, I was more poor than you were because I was at your level plus 400000 in debt. So I, you're way ahead of where I am, way ahead. 400000 probably is lying. 300,000, but then we got a house. So no, by 34, you were catching up. Oh, well, we were a disaster. Yeah. But to say that you could save a thousand dollars in emergency fund, unrealistic. So I'm going to try to put this in two generations. The generation now, if you're in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, try to get a thousand dollar emergency fund. Great mm -hmm. idea. I think if you're in your teens, 20s, 30s, maybe even your 40s, your emergency fund is $50 extra that you can access in your credit card to take an Uber somewhere to get to get home. So I'm just so the reality is it's not a thousand. It'd be great if it could be a thousand. It's the higher the better. But the reality for your generation, I think you would get off of this and go, we don't have a thousand dollars emergency fund. It's not going to happen. You don't need a thousand. If you could get 50 or 100 just so you can access because that's something, the unexpected thing comes up, and that is trying to get home from a spot you need an Uber. So well, that's I think what's weird about it, to be good. Um, like from my perspective, uh, and I'm, I, it's obviously there's elements of not reality in it, but it's sometimes the way that you personally feel about a situation. I, I'm like, well, I'm, we're well off. You put us in an unbelievable position. I have an education, I have my health, I have all these positive things. But you're asking to like, like Dave Ramsey in this situation is like have a lifeboat, right? Mm -hmm. But sometimes you feel like you're actually already on the lifeboat. Great. So point. it's like, so it's like you're, you're asking me to have a lifeboat when I'm already like paddling on out to sea with the lifeboat. And it's a choppy water. <laughs> yeah. It's like I can maybe yeah. get an extra or <laughs> I like it. Well, I think that's the beauty of this uh generational uh, discussion we're having that you suggested because I thought we were going to do it in a different format and journal it and you go no we'll zoom it I didn't even know what the hell zoom was literally I this is I can even go on a tv now and navigate the tv I can go from hulu which I had no idea to to youtube back to regular tv so this has been unbelievable this has been great time so it's been great so baby step two pay off debt great idea we all know that incrementally uh, start paying off your credit card. Uh, I think a lot of people in your era, uh, <clears throat> you know, they, the new uh, reset, and I don't like this idea, uh, kind of the World uh, Bank is talking about, uh, you'll uh, have nothing and be happy. I don't know about that for Americans. I think Americans like to at least have some ownership because ownership might be a condo, might be uh something you know it might not always be a house but it might own personal ownership of something is okay too so uh what percent of your friends out there in la like i i couldn't move out to la and ever own a house do does everybody what percent owns houses do you think or in the process the bank always owns the house well, when they talk about paying off debt paying off your house some people might always live in rental property don't you think well, that's what's crazy is so if I think about Minnesota friends, most, right? Like I would say 50% own at a house. least, at least. Um, 
of your age has a house probably already. Sure. Yeah. Maybe. And I'm even starting to see second houses, right? <laughs> as far as like, I see people selling their starter yeah. home, yeah. moving up. Uh, out here, I know of people with houses. But like, that's rare. A handful of people I know. And that's older people. Not many your age, are there? No, I mean, no, I'm 30. I mean, I'm 34. So there, there is some individuals with houses, but I'm what talking. Per, what, and you have a, LJ's in LA with a huge network of friends for actors, comedians, business people, nonprofit, profit. Have some, what percent have homes, do you think? We're back here. I think you're right. It'd be 50, My 60. group? Yeah. 1%. <laughs> Literally one out of 100. Yeah. Isn't that wild? Because of my connections that I maybe have out here, I maybe know, like, be probably like two to three hundred people, mm -hmm. right? That I actually could maybe like would know my face. Maybe I wouldn't know their name, but I could say but, hi. But, to. but that that's about my same network here in Rochester, and I've been here. I know a lot more than that. But in your network, if you were at two three hundred in your network of people, that's huge. And you've been out in LA. I mean, that doing that in LA is pretty amazing. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, and so that's what I'm saying. I know maybe three to five people with a home. <laughs> that's pretty wild. So the take home for people listening to this in the next generation or now, give yourself some grace and uh, give be patient and look for opportunities, but realize it maybe is not going to happen right now. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how that, I don't know how it works. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll figure it sure. out. That, so baby step three, save three to six months of expenses in fully funded emergency fund. Wow. I think Pam and I maybe achieved that at 60, maybe. So I think what Dave Ramsey, these are ideal situations, but maybe in the class when like the teacher up front, when I didn't realize that I might've been rolling my eyes to him going, that's a nice goal, but it's like, as I'm looking around, there was a lot of people, 30, 40, 50 year olds in the class. And I'm thinking, there's no way. Maybe some are. I don't know. How old were you? You were taking this at 50, right? 55. We so in theory, years. you would have been one of the most financially stable individuals in the class. Yeah, yeah. I, I was, you, but you were able to look at it and go, that's still difficult. Oh, I'm, I'm looking at, because there's guys like you in the room and I'm rolling my eyes, I'm sure thinking good luck with that <laughs> yeah so and i didn't mean that in a bad way but idealistically it'd be wonderful but these are good goals these are good goals baby step number four is a great idea when you can start doing it and i wish i'd done this earlier and that's that you start saving 15 percent of your income net income not gross they want you to do gross good luck with that it'll never happen for retirement, very difficult to do. Uh, we probably saved eight or 10% and we did fine. Those who did, I, I probably knew 10% of my friends did 15% and they're doing better. But if you can do that, but if you don't have anything to save, there's no way to save an extra 10 or 15%. But anything you save now, even like 5% now consistently will be wonderful for you. That'll be wonderful. So if you can, like Elof has a salary now. I mean, if you can start thinking about uh, saving a little, huge, yeah, huge. Because the it's a snowball effect. He would continually talk about the snowball at the start of the hill. You go, this is not a very big ball. At the end of the hill, it's huge. Just like we were alluding to at the start in the last uh, like 10 years of your life in retirement, that ball's going to go from, size x to four times that size it just that's the snowball it just picks up speed picks up size and it's wild so that's uh i agree with his so baby step one was uh i'm just looking at these now i don't know them at the top of my head save a thousand dollars for a starter emergency fund if your generation could save 50 or 100 for that uber trip back home that you can access out of your uh credit card if you have to awesome if you can pay off all debt, debt getting paid off means credit card first. Try not to get in credit card debt. It'll kill you. Uh, so that's baby step two, pay off debt. Uh, accept house using the debt snowball. 
payoff, uh, let's see, step three, save three to six months of emergency expenses. Step four, invest 15% of your income. I would just say if you can step, uh, save any percent of your income, great idea. Two, three, five percent. <throat> Uh, then it talks, you're, you are, <clears throat> you're not even on this list yet, but then it's, you're talking about saving for children, children's college fund. That just started when you guys were kids and we didn't even do that for you. We saved separately. Uh, it, it was so rigid at the time that you, when you started saving, for example, uh, the funds had to be dedicated to school you're going to go to. Well, who knew that? You know, we could have started a college fund, but it's you would have had to go into the University of Minnesota. Well, who did that? Al finally did at the end, but none of you did that. So that didn't yeah. make sense then. And uh, we made a good call. We saved in other ways. Baby step six, uh, pay off your home early. You know, this is these are things really for somebody 55 and older, not 34. And then... Uh, Baby step seven, which you're already doing and we're trying to do, build wealth and give. I mean, you're already, you, wealth can be not only uh, uh, your uh, funding, but it can also be time and talents. So you're, you're way ahead of some other people on the steps. You're, you're solidly into seven, where some don't even get into seven. I mean, I have a lot of retired friends who are out doing a lot of things and they aren't doing number seven. Uh, they could do more there. Who am I to judge? I don't know, but it, uh, it, there's a lot more that sometimes could be done in time and talents. So you don't yeah. know. Uh, so that's good. So that's uh, the baby steps of seven. I would definitely get a Dave Ramsey book. It's uh, definitely worthwhile to do. Uh, then I'll go on to, uh, oh, rich dad, poor dad. I'll just give the synopsis on Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Kiyosaki is in a group I'm in. I've talked to him a couple of times. He wouldn't know me from Adam. That said, uh, his take home is the Rich Dad was this uh, friend of his kids when he was growing up who would kind of, things had, done, he maybe learned generationally that you start investing in assets early and assets are, things that can actually generate passive income for you, like real estate or education. Education's an asset that can generate for you. And, and it continued to do the things where any money spent would be paying back dividends in the future. Unlike his dad, which was the poor dad, who, and I get it, I, I don't like that he always says poor dad because that poor dad was doing everything to make him get forward. So, but he would describe his poor dad as, uh, only investing in things that weren't an investment at all. He would buy a car and think that that was an investment. Well, you and I both know a car is nothing but a money pit. Never, never happens. It never I think ends. cars are so cool, but I don't know if you instilled it in me where I just, and, and I've also had my own. I cars like are I, so I, what? I always think cars are cool, but you, you've you instilled it in me, but then also I've just felt it myself where I'm like, these things are a money pit. It's oh, God. crazy. Oh, I would love a cool car. I've never had a cool car. Uh, I, I mean, a cool car would be a great thing, but I think you need to wait for that has always been my grandpa's thought, my dad's thought. Uh, so there's the rich dad, poor dad, just the thought of it. And in, in rich dad, poor dad, the, the, my, it's all about mindset, the mindset of learning to understand what's an investment, what's actually an asset versus what's going to pull you, pull you down and be a burden on you. So uh, I think Rich Dad, Poor Dad, you could speed read the summaries and get that. I think you'd go online and get that and, and not even have to buy the book. Save yourself 20 bucks. Uh, same way, the, it's probably not 20, it's 12. Uh, Kiyosaki, if I, 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 I'm promoting your book, but it, some people can't afford it. Uh, and the synopsis online are good. The same way with Dave Ramsey, I think you can go online and uh, get it. His course, though, is excellent. His course is uh, just gets you in the right mindset because you want the empowerment of education. You need to start educating yourself. That's where you are now. Uh, we got to encourage each other. Uh, it's not where you're at. It's where you're going. And then ultimately empowering. And what empowers you? Podcasts, learning things, books, uh, does it? Friends, friends sharing information. Yeah. And then my buddy over here, uh, Mitch Anthony, you can go on uh, 
uh, podcast and internet and see a ton of his things. But the new re my, uh, retirement mentality is something you and I've had instilled down through us forever. And so many of these things are not new ideas. It's uh, somebody else delivering the message in a new package. And Mitch does a real, real nice job. And that is that uh, lead by example, make it happen, service above self, lifelong learning, specifically in finances, start learning about it. You and I have just kind of developed a relationship that has been great trying to understand crypto, stock market, options. It's been wonderful. Yeah. It's been all new to me, all new to me, thanks to you. And then, uh, and then realizing your retirement might be an opportunity for a whole new life. And through his book, I fully get that. And I, I saw it through my dad too, where he kind of reinvented himself on retirement. My dad was a farmer first, but his brother came to the farm and the oldest one got the farm. So my dad at your age, maybe even 36, I would, yeah, it'd be fun to look back. I think at 36, he had a huge Titanic time. He had to leave the farm because there was not enough for both families. I think he might have been almost 40. It'd be fun to look back at that. So yeah. then what does he do? He's kind of out in sales world a little bit, goes to radio school. That's why I think you are a natural do through him. He went to like Beck radio school, we did that for a while. You couldn't make a dime in radio. Oh my God, it was brutal. Yeah. He literally went, uh, he was at KSOO in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And I think he was like, making 80 cents an hour. I mean, you couldn't raise a family on that. And he had a new kid <clears throat> and he went to the owner of the station and asked for like a raise to 90 cents or a dollar. And he goes, one of you shared with anybody what you're making? He goes, no, no. And you guys don't. You're the highest paid person in the office. <laughs> I mean, <coughs> they love my dad, but you just didn't make money back then. Wow. But So he's a radio guy out in KSOO, had a chance to do TV in Sioux City, Iowa. He could have been the first TV guy and he would have done great, but he didn't think that was the right move for him at that time because he wanted to go back home. Went back home, became a grocer, reinvented himself at like 45. Then at uh, 45, uh, no, no, probably 60, had an opportunity to be a uh, meat inspector, reinvented himself. And then ended his career helping me in my practice. So you have it in your blood to reinvent, reinvent, reinvent. And uh, that was the take home from new retirement mentality. Uh, you, you, you don't don't uh, tread water, you know, swim, keep moving, keep moving and uh, just make it happen. So shout out to Mitch. I would definitely get his book or listen to it. I definitely do Dave Ramsey and I definitely do uh, Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Finally, that was the uh, kind of formal books, a uh, current nonfiction book besides these is uh, Green Lights by uh, Matthew McConaughey. Oh, excellent book. He, uh, I'll just give you the synopsis. He goes out in the deserts literally for like 52 days to try to encapsulate his thoughts and memoirs of these journals he had kept since he was a kid. So he kind of literally, I've journaled a lot. I think you've journaled a lot, but he literally sat down. It's like, all right, and put it all on paper. And that's kind of like what you and I are kind of trying to do with Titanic Times. We're trying to put these into modules so we can then condense them to move them on to our family or anybody else. That like Is to it join his personal in, memoir? On the ship. Personal memoir. <clears throat> and okay. uh, so it's green lights. And uh, I encourage you to re read it. Uh, one of his uh, stories, I think this was kind of a fun one. <clears throat> he used to, for hustling girls, he would say, you just get in the back of this old truck with a megaphone, like in high school. And, hey, come on over here. What are you doing, little gal? And he got a lot of positive responses. Poor, beat up, megaphone, very <clears throat> not traditional way. And then apparently he got a little uh, savvier, he thought. And he had good luck with that. He had a lot of girlfriends. Everyone knew him. He's that crazy guy in the truck with a megaphone. You and I would have definitely done that. LJ, you were that guy in football. You didn't wear the black spikes. You wore the, what were they? I gold. wore white ones when I was going through. Yours were I spray gold. painted my cleats gold. Gold. So that's kind of the same way McConaughey was. 
And but then he uh, got a uh, fancy car. He got this red car, and he thought, "Well, now the girls are going to like him. I really go after him." They went after. He found out they went after the more genuine Matt McConaughey, which was get in the back of this truck, be who you really are, and get on the megaphone. And that's you and I have learned that long ago. Be who you are. If you want to wear gold yeah. spikes, wear gold spikes. If you want to wear white ones, wear white ones. But be yourself. But uh, so I encourage anybody to go to Green Lights. It's a good book. It's a good book. Just kind of a fun read and 300 pages long, I think. I, I don't really spend a lot of times with a full book because I usually go to books like uh, uh, some of these other things. You can go to summaries and uh, get it. <clears throat> but and you know what? I forgot about doing about White Coat Investor. I will do that in a summary next time. Give me. Uh, I do have to go to another Zoom here. Ooh, ooh. We might have to wrap this up. That sounds good. I have another Zoom on uh, uh, did, did, that I'm doing on TED Talks. And uh, I'm trying to put out a TED Talk and uh, we're working through that. So uh, I love we'll it. See. Well, I'm working on this course platform, Titanic Times, trying to get the website out in the next kind of few days for you to at least mm -hmm. be able to kind of peep it. And then we'll probably... Uh, even start hosting some of these different talks on there once we really get stuff refined. So well, I'm, I'm wide open to go live with this, put it out there, invite people in. If they want to watch, they want to watch. If they don't, they don't. Uh, I'm involved with a couple you, groups. So we're gonna, it's interesting. you want to do this on YouTube or you want to host it on Titanic times? What are you thinking? Probably Titanic times, okay. but whatever format, what do I know? I, I like the format Titanic times, but I do know, you can go into these sites where these people, there's people paying. We're we're a no entry site. You just come and chat and whatever. Yeah, uh, they're playing buku bucks of a lot of money to get into these things. Sometimes there's five people on. There's times you pay 199 dollars, and there's seven people on. It's not not everybody is Tony Robbins. Not everybody is. Uh, you know, you see a Tony Robbins things, and he's got a big bank of people. You know, I don't know. 4,000 worldwide, 40,000, and everybody's doing this. And he's done a great deal. I've done his course. There's not, I, I do have this expertise besides seeing uh, 200,000 people in my life. There's not a course I haven't done, been through, all of them. From uh, the old days, uh, uh, Andrew Carnegie up through Tony Robbins. Been there, done that, often paid the fee for it. So I'm trying to condense Titanic times down for people who don't have the funds and the time to be doing what I did. Yeah. So th that, that's where we're at. That Titanic times is going to be an entry point for people that just, we want to empower them to see our vulnerable abilities of things we've gone through Titanic times with health, mental, uh, uh, business, finance, relationships, and to share in and realize you're not alone. And ultimately, it comes about faith, family, friends. And for us, football, and God bless you, I say, under the whole thing of what you do every day, you're leading by example, making it happen in service above self. I think a lot of people wait till the end of their life to kind of do this service above self and miss out. So I think in a lot of sense, you got your life flip flop where a lot, I mean, you're doing things I wish I would have done. And I'm not there yet. So I think you're able to do and provide some encouragement for people in a reverse way. You learn a lot. About your, give me a wrap up today. Yeah, I would just, I would, I would uh, push everyone to just try to uh, providing service in the community that you're close to. Like you were saying, I like to go to the church that's closest to me. Mm -hmm. I would say start serving at, within like a nonprofit that's like close to you, you know, within a 10 minute drive, something that's reasonable. Mm -hmm. um, serving should, you should think about it the same way as running a marathon. Don't go out to that nonprofit and serve eight hours the first day. Just do two, go in and out, say hi, meet whoever runs it. And then, and then, and then bounce and then try to come back um, a month later. Consistency is always going to be better than um, just your immediate like boom, boom, pow. I did it I once. Totally agree. So, totally uh, agree. and you'll, you'll like consistency more. It'll, it'll feel better for yourself. Mm -hmm. 
But it's crazy. I would say start today. That's the only way to do anything in life. Start, start today. Start today. Well, Godspeed. Thank you, LJ. I'm